Your hip consists of two main parts that fit together like a ball and socket, the femoral head at the top of the leg, and the acetabulum in your pelvis. A total hip replacement is usually done when severe damage from arthritis or injury has made it difficult to perform daily activities. During the procedure, the femoral head and acetabulum are replaced with artificial components called prostheses. An artificial hip prosthesis consists of a cup called the acetabular component and a metal stem called the femoral component. Before your procedure, you will receive intravenous fluids, antibiotics, and medications to help you relax. A catheter will be placed in your bladder to drain your urine. Most hip replacements are done under general anesthesia, in which case a breathing tube will be inserted in your throat to help you breathe during the operation. Since fluid and blood loss can be significant, banked blood will be prepared in case you require a transfusion. You may have the opportunity to collect and store your own blood in preparation for your surgery. Your surgeon will begin by making an incision overlying your hip, separating the muscles and ligaments to expose the joint capsule. After incising the capsule, your surgeon will dislocate the femoral head from the acetabulum. He or she will remove any damaged cartilage or bone in the acetabulum, reshape the acetabular socket, and secure the acetabular prosthesis in place using special cement or screws. Turning next to the femur, your surgeon will remove the femoral head, shape the remaining femur to fit the prosthetic stem, and secure the femoral component using cement or other techniques. Once both components are firmly in place, your surgeon will slide the prosthetic femoral head into its acetabular counterpart, test the movement of your new hip joint, and verify that it is properly positioned with an x-ray. Your surgeon will then close the joint capsule, repair the muscles, place a drain in your hip to remove excess fluid, and close the incision with stitches or staples. At the conclusion of the operation, a special device will be temporarily applied to prevent your hip from dislocating. You will then be moved to the post-surgical recovery area until you are stable and awake from the anesthesia. If necessary, you may receive a blood transfusion at this time. You will continue your IV fluids and antibiotics for a short time and will be given pain medications as needed. Your catheter will likely be removed after several days. To prevent blood clots from forming in your leg, you will be given a blood thinner, asked to wear pneumatic compression stockings, and encouraged to begin walking as soon as possible. A nurse or physical therapist will help you get out of bed and use your new hip. Most patients are released from the hospital once they are able to walk with the aid of a crutch or walker. Thank you.